right. So the last part we're going to talk about in chapter 10 is drawing and polygons on the coordinate plane. Polygons means shapes with straight sides. Okay? So it could be any shape as long as it has straight sides. But if it has any curves, those are not polygons. Okay, so any kind of shape, sometimes we get some funky, crazy shapes, but as long as they have straight sides, they're a polygon. And basically what they're going to do, like a rectangle, basically what they're going to do is they're going to give you points. So like here they have one, four, okay, and they name those points. So like this point's name is A, okay, and you label the points with their name as you plot them, and then you connect the dots as you go. So it's kind of like those um, sheets y'all used to get with the connect the dots and they make a picture. Okay. It's kind of like that. Um, right here, they have this key, this word right here called vertices. That's an important word that I might would box in. What is a vertice or a vertex? Is the singular version vertex, vertex, or vertices? Your vertices or vertex is your your corners or your points of the shape. Okay, that's an important word that you need to know. Okay, your vertices are your points. So like here is a vertice. Here's a vertice, vertex. Here's a vertex. Here's a vertex. Those are all your vertices of that shape. Okay. So we're going to, you're going to just be able to plot those points and you're going to make shapes. Sometimes you're going to have to find the area of the shape. Sometimes you're going to have to find the perimeter and sometimes you're just going to have to figure out how far is one dot from the next dot, okay? And that's what we're really going to do tomorrow with our Disney day. You're going to get a map of Disney World, and it's going to have all the rides on the map. And you're going to have to um, put, like, tell how far each ride is from each other, what different rides are from each other. And then you'll get to watch the, like, the virtual ride of the so, but in order to find the distance, there's a couple different ways that we can find distance. The easiest way is if you plot the points of the coordinate plane and you just count the squares between it. That's the easy way. But sometimes you're not given a coordinate plane or sometimes you're really, really far apart and there's a faster way to do it besides just counting. Okay. And this is going to involve some absolute value. Why would it involve absolute value if we're talking about distance on the planet plane? The absolute. What is the definition of absolute value? <coughs> absolute. It's like the opposite. Not opposite. The whole. It's like. It's the, it's the whatever. It's the, I might would look in my packet and find the. I, the definition of absolute value. The distance between a number and zero. Absolute value deals with distance, right? Okay. One of the questions on your test next week are going to say distance is always blank. Distance is always negative, always positive, or always neither. Which one is it? Distance is always positive. Distance is always positive. Can I have a negative distance? No, we talked about this. We talked about if I drove from here to Warner Robins in reverse, it would still be a positive amount of distance. I might would write that down if you don't know that because that is exactly one of the questions on your test next week. Distance is always positive. 
which means since absolute value talks about distance, absolute value is always positive. Absolute value is always positive. That's also another question on more text next week. The absolute value is always positive. Okay? Also, you're going to have to know the definition of absolute values for your test next week. Okay? So, we're going to use the absolute value of points on the coordinate plane to find the distance. Now, if they are in the same quadrant, I will write this down. If they're in the same quadrant, we're going to subtract. Same quadrant, subtract. Same, subtract. Same, subtract. Same, subtract. Okay? If they are in a different quadrants, guess what we're going to do? Add. Different. Add. Same. Subtract. Different. Add. <clears throat> if we were just looking at points without looking at them on a coordinate plane, how would we know, what would we look at to know what quadrant they're in? The, 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 um, the X and Y. The, the X and Y, but what about the X the, and the Y? The, 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 the signs, negative and positive, right? If it's in quadrant one, what signs are in positive, 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 positive? If it's in quadrant three, what's it going to have? Negative, negative, negative. If it's in quadrant two, positive, negative, positive. positive. And quadrant four would be positive, negative. positive negative. Guess what? Those are also questions on your test next week. Okay. Okay. So we're going to look at the signs of the points to see if they're in the same quadrant. If they're in the same quadrant, what do we do with the points? Subtract. And if they're different signs, that means they're in different quadrants, which means we're going to do what with the points? Add them. Okay. Page. Most of the time, they're going to give you a coordinate plane for you to be able to find the points, the distance between the two points on a coordinate plane. So, for example, we have negative 4, negative 2, and negative 4, positive 3. We can plot these two points on the coordinate plane. I can come over here and go negative 4 negative 2, and I can go negative 4, positive 3. And we want to see how far apart are these two points. So to, the easiest way to do that is count the squares in between the two points. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Or you can just okay. the little things right up there. Where it's on the corner, just go one, two, three, four, five. Or you can tell if you have two that are negative and three that are positive, two plus three. So what Eli was getting at here is how far is this dot from the x-axis? Three. Three. So it has an absolute value of three. How far is this dot from the axis? Two. So it has an absolute value of two and you would add those together and what do you get five. five that's what they're talking about in different quadrants how you would add them okay let's pretend we didn't have the coordinate plane here and all we were given were these two points okay we would want to look at the signs to tell what quadrants they're in so like right here is negative negative and this one is Negative, positive. Are they in the same quadrant or different quadrant? Different. different because do our signs match? No. no. Because we're in different quadrants, we're going to add. Different quadrants means we're going to add. Well, what numbers are we going to add? 
We're going to add the things that are different, okay? Do you see how your x values right here are the same? You kind of ignore those. You don't really pay attention to that. You can almost like scratch them out, okay? We're paying attention to the y values here that are the differences. So we've got the absolute value of negative 2 and the absolute value of 3. Well, the absolute value of negative 2 is just... 2 and the absolute value of 3 is so and 2 plus 3 is which is what we got when we plotted the points right but you're not always given the coordinate plane and sometimes you're going to have decimal point all right so like this one right here we can plot these two points we've got 2 negative 3 so out 2 down to negative 3. Then I have 6 negative 3. So I go out 6 is down to negative 3. What's the distance between those two points? 4. Four. Four. There's 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? They're in the same quadrant, so what would you end up doing here with the points? Subtracting. Subtracting. So if I have 2, negative 3, and 6, negative 3, I have a positive negative and a positive negative. Do they match? Are they the same? Yes. Does this point signs match this point signs? Yes, so they're the same. And so when they're in the same, we subtract. subtract. Well, what are we going to subtract here? Six. The 6 and the... Two. So 6 minus 2 gives me 4. Four. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's flip it over. All right. These are just drawing the shapes on the coordinate plane. Okay. Um, really, all you have to do is just plot these points. So let's look at number one. The first point, A, is 1, 3. So we go out 1, up 3, and then we want to label it. A because it's its name. We're not going to go four four, so four four. Label it B, and I'm going to connect the dots. They're always going to go in alphabetical order, guys. You're never going to go A C then B. Okay. And then we have two zeros, so out two, up nine, that's C. So we're going to go B to C. And that, since that's our last point, we're going to close up the shape going back to the original point. Okay. What shape did we make? A triangle. A triangle. It's got three sides, so it's a... Triangle. Oh, yeah. Alright, so at number two we have three five, so we can go out three, <coughs> up five, and that's D. And then we can go out six, up two, that's E, and I can connect the dots there. And then I have 4, 1, that's F. And then I have out, G, out 0, up 3, that's my G. And then I just connect the dots. Looks more like a trapezoid shape to me. It's like a trapezoid because it's 
not completely perpendicular sides. All right, I want y'all to I want y'all to plot number three. All right, number three. Yep. Plot those points and connect the dots. All right, what shape did we make for number three? A rectangle. Sometimes, because these are shapes we know, they may ask you to find the perimeter or the area of these shapes. Perimeter is the outside, remember? Okay, so we need to know what's the distance around each point. Well, how far is it from J to K? One. One. How far is it from K to L? Three. One, two, three. And from L to M is one. And from M to J is three. Three. So if I wanted to find the perimeter of that, what would I have to do? Three times one. Add, add them all up. Perimeter plus. One plus three plus one plus three. My perimeter would equal eight. If I wanted to find the area, how do I find area? Length times width. So it would be one times three, which gives me Area talks about how many squares are on the inside of the shape. Well, how many squares are inside our rectangle here? One, two, three. So my area would be three. All right, I can plot the next one, number four. Y'all go ahead and plot that one. Some of you already have. So I've got four, negative two, that's in. And then I have... 4, six. negative 6, that's P, and then negative 3, negative 6, that's Q, and then negative 3, negative 2, that's R, and I connect the dot. What if I wanted to find the distance between, like, the lengths on here? What's the distance from R to N? Um, well, how far is it R from here? Three. And how far is it from N to here? Four. Three plus four is? So it has a length of seven. What, how, what's the distance from N to P? One, two, three... Four. What's the distance from P to Q? Seven. And what's the distance from Q to R? Four. How would I find the perimeter of that? Mm -mm. Perimeter. Perimeter is the outside. We're going to add up the length of the outside. It'd be like if we took and we unwrapped this, we want to know the distance of the whole line. So it would be 7 plus 4 plus 7 plus 4, which will give me, my perimeter would be 22. How would I find the area? Area is length times width, so I'd have to do 7 times 4. So I should have 28 squares inside that shape. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So my area is 28. Mm -hmm. The same.
know you were telling us earlier to so if it's different, you add it and if it's actually different, you know you're supposed to be the one room and the way around it, you have to add it to all the all right, very last page of the chapter 10 packet. Okay, so we're going to pretend that the coordinate plane is not there for you to use. Okay, we have to figure out the distance without looking at the coordinate plane. Okay, so let's remind ourselves. If they're in the same quadrant, what do we do? And if they're in the different quadrants, they add. How do I check to see what quadrants they're in? Well, they're um, positive negative. They're positive negative signs in the points, right? So looking at number five, we have positive, positive, and positive, positive. So same quadrants or different quadrants? Same. Same quadrant. So same quadrant means we're going to do what? Subtract. subtract. What point, what numbers are we going to be subtracting here? Our X's or our Y's? Y's because those are different. So we're going to do 5 minus 2, which equals 3. So the distance between those two points are 3. All right, we look at number six. We have positive, negative, and then we have negative, negative. negative. Same or different? Yeah. Different. If it's different, what are we going to do? Add. Are we going to add the X's or the Y's here? We're going to add the X's because those are different. Look at your Y's. You have negative four and negative four. Those kind of just cancel out. Okay, we're looking at the, the different ones. So we've got 1 plus the absolute value of negative 6, which is just 6. Basically, it's all positive because distance is always what? Positive. So 1 plus 6 gives me so the distance is 7. All right, look at number seven. We have negative three, positive three, and then positive three, positive three. Two. Same or different? different? Different. And so if it's different, what are we going to do? Different, we add. add. Are we adding the X's or are we adding the Y's? Why the X's? They're different. One's negative and one's positive. The Y's, they're both positive three. Okay? So we're going to add the absolute value of negative three and the absolute value of three, which ends up just being six. Number eight is interesting because we have zero. What's the sign for zero? Uh, the one. Is zero ever, is zero positive or negative? Neither. Neither of them. It's neutral. So we can put an N for neutral. So we have neutral positive, neutral negative. Are those going to be on the same or different? They're both on the y-axis, but one's on the positive side and one's on the negative side. So they're different, so we're still going to do what if they're different? We're going to add. What are we adding? Six plus the absolute value of negative two, which is eight. Two, so when we add that together, we get eight. All right, number nine. Same quadrants or different quadrants? Different. different quadrants. And if they're in different quadrants, what are we going to do? Add. Add. 
So which ones are we going to add? The x values or the y values? The, the, the x. So the absolute value of negative 1 is 1. And the absolute value of 4 is 4. So when I add 1 plus 4, I get... So they have a distance of 5. Number 10. Same or different? Same. same. So if they're the same, we're going to subtract. Are we subtracting the x's or the y? The y's. So we're going to take 4 minus 1, and that's going to give me 3. Okay. All right. Whew. You can breathe. All right, we're going to do a group jam over this now. Okay? So go 